District number 76. House District 76, the Fighting 76th. House District 76. So uh, how are things with you? They're going fantastic, Ed. And Kim, thanks so much for having me on this morning. I really appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to everybody. Well, so thank we you were, for joining us. We were we talking a little it. bit uh, before the show that uh, you started the campaign a year ago. That's right. You know, it was one of those things that, well, the campaign actually, in reality, started back in 2015, 2016, when we had the really bad algal events uh, where the Caloosahatchee was turning green and we were dealing with red tide. Um, but with this campaign itself, one of those things is I felt that you needed to get out early and let people know what you're about, to give them actual time to talk to you, to discuss the issues and um, show that you're prepared to serve. So um, why did you decide that you wanted to run for House District? Uh, why not stay in, in Sanibel? And, you know, it's a nice little place to uh, run a nice little you community. Know, it's a, it's mayor a, seat's it coming is, up. It is. No, it's a fantastic thing. But I actually came here from Ireland as a boy uh, when I was 15. I went to Bishop Rowe High School here in town. And I'd first come out and start spending time in 76. But when I came here, I was so welcomed by everybody in Lee County. And I was taught to fish and I was taught to water ski and do all the things that we love. And I decided to sit down and write myself a list of the things that I felt a son of the Republic and a particularly an adopted son um, should accomplish. And all of those things I've done. And that serve is, first of all, look after yourself, get a job, have a family. And when you've got spare time, I coached all the teams out at Sanibel for the kids. I'm the scoutmaster out there. And then when you have extra time and experience in the business world, then you start to serve on some of your local charitable boards. And I do that pro bono for a lot of the ones we have here around here in town. And then, um, then I promised my dad when I got here that one of his sons would be elected to the city council, and I felt I owed it to him and to serve the community that were so kind. And the final thing on that list was to go to statewide, that I'd been successful enough, I'd experienced enough, and I'd put enough hard work in to earn the respect of people and to get results. And that's really what I'm interested in. So why do you think that people hate elected officials right now? You know what? You get weasels, as with all things in life. And there's a lot to be said for who's backing people and who's buying them. It's, a, it's an unfair term. But I think sometimes people are very suspicious that once they get elected and they're getting money from outside organizations, etc., then that's the last you've ever seen of them, which is a mistake. And I, and I think it's a lure. The lure of power, instead of going up, getting results, then getting back home to your family and friends where you, you can sit at somewhere like Pete's Time Out and talk to the, your friends and locals. And they say, well, look, I think this that, and the other. If you're in Tallahassee, you're not going to hear that. Mm -hmm. Well, can you give us a little bit of history about what you've done thus far? Because you were on the city. You're on the city council now in Sanibel. You also were on the city of Sanibel Planning Commission for a couple years. And then you also ran previous to this for another office. Is that correct? It is. And I should tell you, all of those positions you met, both elected and appointed, were all uncompensated. So we're one of the last cities that doesn't pay its city councilmen. So you're literally volunteering. In 2016, I had run and actually, and I told to my beautiful wife of 25 years that it was either we fight now for clean water and be poorer now or bankrupt later. And I had a lot of people, see, the way I've always looked at clean water is tied to the economics of our community. Good citizens buy a house, they work hard for 30 years, they sell the house, and then they squared themselves away for the retirement. And as taxpayers, we don't have to then take care of that extra cost. What was happening was, is with a micro recession in Lee County, those 30 years of honest, honest hard work by citizens was being wasted. Their property values disappeared. And I felt that this was something, if we wanted our sons and daughters to come home or grow up the same that we, way we did on the coast, then it was time to fight. And she agreed with me. So I know people didn't get a chance to hear the ad, so we'll, we'll try and play it before you, before you go today. But part of the ad is that you're a Trump supporter. I am. Do you wish you took that part out of it? I'm 100% a Trump supporter. Simple okay. as that. And actually, my present is my truck has been keyed twice yeah. because of the Trump stickers. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it's going to take more than that. Yeah. So why do you support Trump? Listen, it's a results issue. I've seen I'm I care about form. I mean, substance over form. I've seen what form looks like, but with no results. With Trump, he was actually pushing through the water, that money that we needed to fight on the EAA lands. I mean, to look after from the right. federal level, because that was being used. Florida was saying, you know, I'm not going to put in money. And if the feds don't, then the feds got to say, well, we're not going to put in money. Mm -hmm. And I think he pushed did a lot of great results there. Plus, when you look at his results for all aspects of the economy. We had the best economy in history with the lowest unemployment rates for every demographic that you want to hang a sign on somebody in history. 
That's what I want. That's what I want for all of us. It's that I emigrated in a Ronald Reagan era. So that's what I understand is that's winning attitude and supporting each other. Well, he's no Ronald Reagan, but I see what you're saying. Uh, uh, do you think he's got a chance to uh, to win? And how do you think he's uh, been dealing with the COVID-19 situation? Well, I think the COVID-19 situation has been politicized a great deal, especially. And you can see, I mean, we've actually got quotes now where uh, elected officials are saying we've got to keep this going till November. That means that there is an element of our political class who would rather see the people bankrupted just to get Trump out. And anybody who is prepared to do that is somebody I want to be on the opposite side of. And that's why I'm with Donald Trump. Did you know 123 million people died from COVID so far? According it's extraordinary. To Joe Biden? It's extraordinary. Did you hear him say that? No, I did not. Yeah. I he got he came out of his basement one day and he said 123 bunker. million All right. people. But, All right, but sorry, I didn't mean to get off. of. I the, know. And, and Trump, you know, I'm <laughs> on neither side, but he has said his oh, for sure, ridiculous for sure. things as well. So it's nobody's you know, problem. That's, that's right. I would like that's there right. to be a presidential campaign where people actually wanted to vote for a candidate as opposed to not <laughs> wanting to vote for the other candidate, which is what it seems like it has right. been this you don't have to answer this. Anyway, like no, I'm a lawyer Republican years. and I want to vote for Trump just because yeah. I want those results back. You know, it's up to us to live our lives down here. I want sure. the federal government keeping a good, safe economy, keeping a safe overseas. And the rest of us little people, little communities, little st we do our thing and we'll deal with the social issues and our basic economy. But I need this up here, not social engineering from on high. So when you when we all go into the voting booth, I can't see your face. So I don't know if you're ready to ask a question. When we all go into the voting booth and see your name, we're going to say, oh, yeah, he did this on Sanibel. Now we got our six. Well, what, what accomplishments do you want to talk about on and, Sanibel? Well, I'll tell you what. One of those things is, is and I don't look for feet. the. Uh, now we got oh, six that, feet. I don't look for the fanfare. Like I said, I look for the results. And some of the things we've accomplished out there and uh, during my tenure, one is our Donax water treatment plant. We've converted that over to tertiary treatment. And what that does is actually remove legacy nutrients, both nitrogen and phosphorus, out of the Sanibel River. Or we the know Sanibel that, Jason. Slough. Come on. That's <laughs> awesome. Now, we know about <laughs> legacy phosphorus. <laughs> well, I tell you what, and then you've got issues like the Jordan Marsh. We're using grants we created. We actually, you know, sort of tied Mother Nature up and said, you're going to help us with this problem. And we're going to create a park with access for citizens to enjoy because they're coughing up for it, where we're cleaning the water using littoral plantings, etc. And And really the big sort of mechanical cost was that was one sump pump that you might put in a house up north where they have basements, et cetera. And that just takes the water in, puts it in. We track it back and forth. It's naturally purified. And then right back into the Sanibel River. But coastal resiliency for all of us, because listen, we're spending a lot of money living in this area. And the most important thing is to make sure that this area exists, but not giant seawalls, et cetera, living shorelines where you're going to end up with a static shoreline but that's full of mangroves it's full of fish and we can enjoy it as an additional resource okay okay go ahead no i well i know one of the other things when i was looking through some of your stuff that the other things on your agenda is is home rule and protecting home rule can yeah. you speak to that a little bit well i tell you what i was just down in estero complimenting them uh, about a week ago for their hard work with fgcu doing local research on the estero river which is about seven or eight miles long so it's something that can be worked with and uh, but i sort of break home rule up into three things legislate locally on those issues that don't cross outside your own borders each city each area that's your own business what your citizens want and um, the second thing is is to shop local i mean that's part of home rule too we have a duty of citizens is to look after our own community and to shop in our own community and to encourage in-state tourism so you know don't fly off somewhere else come and spend your money in southwest florida we're open and we'd love to see you and the last thing is is like fgc was doing in their water school is research local the people who know the most about the locality have the institutional knowledge and can, can accomplish real results the people that live here not somebody from michigan but the people who live here and we've got to tap those resources and there's an issue in tallahassee with uh, home rule they're trying to take it away from the communities and and it appears like what? the republicans are in on that well i'll tell you what the only thing i can speak to is my example and i passed a homeroom bill on sanibel that i pushed through and the governor's very first veto was to protect that they passed a preemption legislation and the governor said nope this is entirely sanibel's issue my very first veto in office is for jason mon's bill down on sanibel 
Very nice. Nice. Very nice. So how much money have you raised so far? Uh, we're about a little over 250000 And we've done that. And the best way to say we've really done that in a grassroots effort um, in a campaign and the friends of Jason Mon together. But we haven't held a fundraiser. It's literally networks of friends and people who grew up here and realize that after when you have a record of 30 years and people say, look, we know Jason Mon, we know we can trust him. We know the only thing he's really interested in is getting home to his family right after he's gotten his results. And that's the kind of, quote, politician we want. How much, how much will you need to raise to to really run a campaign where you're on TV, you're on the radio? Or oh, everything's done. We're all squared away. OK, yeah. the whole budget's laid out. I mean, these are things you need to plan for, just like budgets that we have here and we're dealing with with the covid. Particularly, you need to plan ahead. You don't just show up and say, I would like lots of money. You need to say this is what we need to accomplish to let our friends and neighbors know what our message is. And we've done that. Are you a DeSantis supporter? Oh, 100 percent. I was actually the first elected official in all both Lee and Collier County from municipal or county uh, level that supported uh, the governor. And an interesting we talk about water quality and getting results. I actually met with him at Sanibel Harbor. Um, it was myself. I met with Matt Gates and Sean Hannity was there, too, later. And I said the only thing that I asked for was that the loggerhead for us was the water management district. And I wanted them all replaced. And for all the help that we could put in, he was like 30 something points down. Everybody laughed at me. I said, but he's anti sugar and he's a loyal conservative who just wants to put in people who are fair, not wildly left, not wildly right, but that represent. You know, if you grow up in a, if you got nothing but sugar in your district, you should have a sugar representative. But somewhere here where we don't have a single stalk, Right. You should have somebody who's not sugar <laughs> representing and just get a fair shake in front of the government because that's all we can hope for and all I expect. So what do you think about how he's handled the covid situation? I think he's done a super job and it's very difficult, you know, and I think one of the things he pointed out um, a few about three weeks ago, he said, look, the press had said by now we'd have four hundred and forty thousand people would be up to our ears and overflowing. And he said the actual number is twenty one hundred. Now, this is not a pleasant thing and there's no good answers, but you've got to balance public safety against what are mm -hmm. we saving if nobody has jobs and if there's no local economy, when we get out the other side, it's going to be 10 times worse. And the build back from that is extraordinary. So I don't think there's a, a win one way or the other is not 100 percent right. He was yeah. picking on New York for quite a while back a few months ago, and now Cuomo seems to be uh, picking on Florida. Yeah. It's like a little yeah. game with with with, with some Tip of the politicians tap. about this. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's quite clear that they've all made this about the election. And I, oh, yeah. I, I'm suspicious that, you know, where we all fall on that list when mm -hmm. it really comes down to because, of course, Cuomo had stuck all the sick people back into nursing homes. I mean, which was a disaster. Right. Right. And so uh, what did you think about the bars, the decision to close the bars? Well, that came as a surprise. I was actually <laughs> yeah. heading down to meet a friend of mine. I haven't seen in a few years. And we were going to get to talk to yeah. at a restaurant with a bar. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. I should say that for everybody watching. The um, No, but I actually got the news on that. And I talked, I represent a great deal of bars and restaurants in the area. Mm -hmm. I actually started as a dishwasher when I was 13 on Sanibel down Blind Pass, the same neighborhood I still live in now. Wow. And now I'm the lawyer for the entire group of restaurants <laughs> and represent a load of other nice. restaurants. That's my American dream yeah. that I'm very yeah, happy no about kidding. and earned it myself from the start to finish. Um, I'm sad for bars. I think because, you said that for a reason, that you that you earned it yourself. Well, I tell you what, I was lucky I came from my dad was a successful man and um, I could see the difference. And not that there's wrong with anything, but your mom and dad paying for everything or giving you a job. That's awesome. But if you want to really lead, you've got to say, you know what? I want to be like my dad. Right. He was my hero because he came to America, made himself a great deal. And I said, I want to be just like he said, no, listen, I'll help you pay for college and law school. I said, no, 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 no. I need to earn it. And I told Babs, I said, both of us have good families. I said, but if we do this together, 25 years later, it'll be the two of us is still there a, together. Is there a, a minute, chance that you're, you feel like maybe one of your opponents didn't do it that way? Well, I tell you what, we'll let the opponents speak for themselves. <laughs> I appreciate you dangling that out yes. there for me. And, now, uh, I want to. And it's over the fence. You've <laughs> mentioned your lovely wife and your son, but you've mentioned your lovely wife twice. I was reading, how, now how soon after meeting her did you actually propose? I waited the uh, two weeks. I, two weeks? Well, I didn't want to sound like crazy, well, so I, I thought it was He's a decision that's, maker, if that's if for I, sure. I, listen, if I'd known now <laughs> what I would have gotten 25 years, I wouldn't have waited the two weeks. But no, I <laughs> fell horribly in love when I met her. Go ahead. All, All right, right. so now what about the 4th of July? 
Boy, that's going to be really sad because that's one of my favorite. And we participate in the parade every year. Yes, actually, you do. You won, actually have some accolades we there, don't won you? We have three or four times for most patriotic and best float. And now I try to concentrate, though, on the scout troop and we do our parades. But we always had family and friends and we all got together and we all built our float and all bunked down in one house. And they got up with crack of dawn because you got to be up early to get into your spot and then go through with it. And we used to dress all the kids up as colonial soldiers. And then have them marked. So it really and was so fantastic. none of that this year. I don't think so. I think it's going to be a big problem. And actually, Sanibel's is I meet a lot of people who set their summer holidays around being there. We have thousands of people lining the roads. Mm -hmm. And it's great for the kids because everybody, all the restaurants and bars throw sweets out to everybody and chotskis and this sort of thing. And it's really, you know, it makes my hair stand up thinking about it. I yeah. want to get back to the bar question just for one second, because they, they the, the governor didn't. It was when things were getting improved and things were starting to open, the governor announced it. Yeah. The, that, that announcement yesterday didn't come from the governor. So he didn't want to. I don't think he wanted to own it because he doesn't want to go backwards. It's clear he doesn't want to go backwards. He's not going to mandate the masks. But how do you get that the bars were the problem or there was some kind of problem when you don't say the protests and the looters are the problem? How, how do you get from? Oh, God, don't stop. Listen, seriously, I couldn't agree with you more on that magical report that nobody got COVID right. at the protest in New York. How extraordinary. <laughs> you know? But I'll tell you what, it's what you need to do, and this is something that I always do, and you can nearly laugh at me, but I'm one of those guys who actually reads everything. So when the governor issues an executive order, I don't look to see what a reporter has decided it means. I read the executive order from line right. by line. And when you read the executive order, he took the extraordinary step to point out why he was doing this. He said, look, I've op we went from phase one, we went to phase two, you had 50%. It is so sweeping how we have broken that rule. I cannot expect the police to be going around the place, rubber hosing right. people right. in bars. And he said the net result is, is that younger people all got together, according to the numbers that came out um, yesterday that he delivered to all of us, and caused the issue. And he said, I can't enforce this place by place as a code enforcement as we usually did. Therefore, because everybody had a chance, quote, and unfortunately, a lot of good people got thrown into that bag, really. And, but because everybody did, I've got to dial that back right now. And it was, if you read it, you can see it's heartfelt. I don't want to do this, but if you're going to not follow the smallest rules or not at least follow the 50%, and we've all seen it. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're not following the 50 percent and you're not going to even try to social distance. Well, guess what? I'm going to have to do something about it. Right? When, when you look back a couple of months, do you think that it was a complete overreach over the whole thing? No, yeah. I think the initial. Well, listen, it's one of those things is we're all Monday morning quarterbacks, quarterbacks. and Monday mm -hmm. morning quarterbacks never lose. At the time, I think the media was doing such a crackerjack job of terrifying yeah. um, citizens. Um. So I think the steps we took, and particularly for to me on Sanibel and my city council, are really kind, intelligent, experienced people. Um, we, our population, the median age is 70, uh, 67, 68. So under the governor, governor's mandate, we're actually like a, I'm sorry, everybody on Sanibel, I don't mean this this way, but we're vulnerable and it's like a giant nursing home. The same rules apply to that. So when I'm, I said on the record at the time, I wouldn't support this at the county level. I don't support it at the state level, but that's not what I am now. I was elected to be a city councilman, and this city needs to follow those rules because of the citizens we have. And that's all that matters. Until you get to the next job, then you start worrying. You don't do this, well, let me cut a deal to do what they want when I get up there. No, sir. You finish the job you're in before you go to the next one. And they never closed the beaches on Sanibel. We never did. No. We closed the parking lots and... And that it's five dollars it. to get there. So there's there's a six there's, bucks well, on the bridge. Six bucks six, to get there and now? five to park. Yeah. And that's the county. We don't own that bridge, so that's <laughs> right. the county's oh, money. Okay. I know this would be very nice if we got all the money from the calls. <laughs> no so I can assure you. So you're gonna run for this. Uh, uh, so it's how many total people in the race? Um, we've got two Republicans in the primary and one uh, Democrat. Now, what? And I, I don't disagree with the. I'm not obviously not like a lover of Democrats, but. I don't disagree what they did. They noticed that there was about 15 seats that nobody was running in from the Democrat because they're hard Republican conservative uh, counties like ourselves or districts. And then about a week before qualifying, uh, somebody said, wait, if we don't have anybody in and a bus hits these two guys, um, we can't win. That's the end of it. So they just picked up people apparently off the street just about who are members of Democratic clubs, et cetera, and pushed them into the race mm -hmm. so that they at least had hedged their bet. So that's that's really what that candidacy about. So I was, um, uh, wouldn't you agree President Trump is not a conservative? 
in the true um, sense of how you are or uh well i think i think the i think there's a bigger discussion and you're pinning me down to something that i've said it very clearly i'm a trump supporter right, simple right. as that but that's uh, when you come to true conservative i think he is a true conservative because those things that matter to me i mean that are viscerally important as civil rights are the second amendment is squashing illegal immigration these are very conservative issues now i think there's issues that can be discussed about budgetary how much we're borrowing etc those sort of things i think are worthy of discussion right 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 um, but, my, but the important key america is great that's what i like and that's yeah. what the conservatives yeah. say and to those of us who lined up in the rain in another country to get here that's the country we came to not some horrible place but a force for okay. good so um back to the question if you go on too long i'll forget the question so i don't filibuster me i'm just that age where i forget things it's not your fault so i wanted to get back to the conservative part because well um on the immigration he hasn't succeeded on that so he did get elected that was like the number one issue where he got elected he didn't really succeed on that but he know, tried he sure tried that he i but do you worry about the conservative movement i was listening to ted cruz and senator lee those are hardcore conservative uh, members of the Senate, do you worry that the conservative movement is is uh, there's no more Tea Party? There, I mean, so what's what's going on with the conservative? Well, here, I'll tell movement? you what, the the answer to that question is a simple statement. Then support real conservatives, people who are in the game and have done asked for nothing more than the opportunity to serve. Didn't try to cash in on it or get on TV or anything else, and they're getting results. And self-identify at all times as a conservative, not whether you're with one crew or another, or not whether you want here and you want me to sell Trump out. It's it's just not going to happen. We either don't talk about it or we talk about something else. But I'm supporting the, the president 100 percent. Got it. No. Nope, I... so, all right. So when you go to when you get elected to go to Tallahassee, uh, do you have to live up there? No. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, you have to live a heck of a drive back yeah, here every yeah. day and I don't have a private plane or something. What's so, wrong yeah, with you, man, you live on Sanibel. You don't have a plane. Come on. You know what? <laughs> if you want to be a, a, this, a this is in deference to ladies, but in, in my book, if you want to be a real man and you want to look after your family, sometimes you've got to go away to do a job that's important to protect them. And I consider it to be that. And we've talked together and what we've set up is so that I can work a bit at night after session. We're to set up a Skype dinner and I'm just going to get a one room bed sit somewhere and then Skype dinner with the family, maybe watch Jeopardy or something on TV and then work a bit more in the night, catch up on any stuff I need to read and then be right back in the morning and then be home Friday night out of town on the way in my truck. How far is that drive? Do you drive? About six Ooh, hours. Yeah. Think you can bike it? No, but the uh, actually we're nearly late here. We just got to a, a zebra crossing or zebra crossing and the uh, you got to what? To this cross a crosswalk and yeah. this guy. He had this guy was, no, 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 this guy was crossing over it and he gets to the middle and a car just drove right through and he's one of those professional bikers and his bike's feet are locked in. He just went, oh, no oh, way. Yeah. That's that that to me. Him. Oh, my God. No, was was he not, okay? Are you a Tour de France fan? N not um, really. Oh, come on now. No, they cheat. They're cheaters. Oh, please. They cheat. <laughs> They all cheat in that race. Well, that, they moved that to August, but they're, they're oh, asking they to, still do it? actually, yeah. there's an argument to cut the whole thing entirely now. I believe it. I mean, no, we get we get the crazy. whole Peloton on Sanibel, I assure you. Oh, you have a Peloton? You have a oh, Peloton? No, they, they like to, I don't oh. have a Peloton. I'm waiting for all the people that bought those. To, to use, use them the, as coat hangers. <laughs> yes. And then, and I then said, you then can buy one off in. eBay. <laughs> That's an expensive coat hanger right there. Those things are a lot of money. super piece of equipment. I'll tell you what. Well, that'd be a sweet thing to pick up on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. That's what I'm waiting for after they get tired somebody will put it up so when you get to tallahassee what what do you want to accomplish and don't say clean water we, we know that everybody wants clean water so after water no i tell you what, what i want to accomplish is what's best for the people of southwest florida i think that's a simple thing you follow the party line but your eye has to be on the prize of the people you're protected you're not up there you know to make deals with something that involves something else. you need to keep focused on here and you need to stay in touch with the district you need to stay in touch with the resources so that you can bring the information to people who are too lazy to look at it themselves and say, this is why we're helping Southwest Florida. This is why it matters about these budgetary issues for us. And then when these budgetary cuts, and they're going to come, uh -huh. are coming, we've got to have other set plan B to deal with clean water issues. And I'm afraid, yes, it matters a great deal to me because if you care about business, you better bloody well care about clean water because that's the backbone of our business. So how do you, I mean, what, what do you want to bring back then? What do you think needs to be brought back when you get up there? Well, what, one of the what things we when, you, when we're dealing with the, the budgetary, well, first of all, you can get all the money that you possibly can to bring because we've all paid it in to our fair share mm -hmm. as taxpayers and we pay a great deal of money uh, towards the state coffers. So you want to bring as much as that home for infrastructure projects as you can and to increase these sort of pro the, um, 
and to increase the effectiveness of shop local campaigns and in-state tourism, the fishing industry here, making sure our beaches are clean and welcome, making sure that the companies around here have the support, making sure that the municipalities, and God, it's hot out here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is yeah. hot. And making sure they have that kind of support. So that's really, and when we can't find that support, finding alternate solutions, like one of the things that I'm very uh, proud to be working on now with some friends is these artificial reefs which you hang under docks, mm -hmm. Fort Myers Beach is working on, Marco Island, but you can make a trade-off. If they're going to cut water uh, quality budgets, then we need to come up with local solutions ourselves. And something like that to be approved statewide um, for areas like us to get past the DEP, et cetera, and all the permit that goes and say yes. And then all of these beaches and bays and bayous, each dock, if we can get one underneath it, they're mm -hmm. cleaning water more rapidly than just throwing money around the place and making people feel good. Yeah, we had them on the show. The, yeah. the reef, a couple times. The, yeah, yeah oh, a couple super of times. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Kevin Rowan, he's is he going to win? Oh, he's fantastic. He's a great lad altogether. And I tell you what, he is a budget champion. Yeah. And if there's one thing Lee County needs across the board, are budget champions, and he really gets it. I'm, I'm terribly proud of him and his campaign. Do you have people you're supporting for Sanibel Council that will run after you both maybe get elected? No, Your wife? My wife. Is she, are you <laughs> running? I looked at my wife. I said, well, she's the person I like the oh. most. But there's people, there's people out there, and I think everybody's focused right now. Our election doesn't come up until March of next year. So there's plenty of time for people in the community. And a community of 6,000 people, you pretty much know everybody who's knocking around. That was a good hmm. not answer. Like <laughs> Do you get to Ireland much? We try to go home every summer. I visit my mom. And then she comes out and stays with us for about two and a half months a year just to spend time, and she visits her sons wherever they happen to be working with their families. How many brothers do you have? I have two brothers. I'm the I'm the middle son. Do you oh, call the her middle son. Do you call her mom? I do indeed. I always have. What is her nickname for you? Damn, son. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Unloved you... middle son. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, I'm very lucky to have a, a super mom, and she's one of those ones that... You know, when she comes to stay, she really helps out and she's really kind to us. You know, so when Babs and I are working, you know, she'll have something together thrown into the crock pot. And now that's now nice. that kind of support really makes a lot of things easy because we're working a lot of jobs. What was the uh, COVID like over there? Uh, we stayed at 12. We've actually jumped up. Then we just went up to 13 a couple of days ago. And people and listen, this is one of those things that everybody needs. What, what do you mean by that? You went 12 up cases. 12 cases. In the whole country? In Sanibel. In you asked Sanibel. About Sanibel. Oh, I thought I said, uh, uh, what's the COVID like in Ireland? No, you say said Sanibel. Right, let's start with Sanibel. Wow. Well, Sanibel, I think we're at 16 now, um, confirmed. And on Tuesday, we're actually going to have a meeting about the masks, whether those are to be made mandatory or not. And I don't know if I can telegraph, but I'm so not. The, so the 13, are they all survivors? Of the, oh, they, I believe so, okay, yes. Okay. And so let's talk about Ireland. How, how did they deal Boy, with it? Boy, well, they did it like a semi-socialist democracy and locked everybody up. A semi-socialist democracy. And how did their number, how did it? Um, I think they had uh, just as many problems as everybody else did. Um, I think they did a good job too, but I'm not prepared to strip people of their liberties that way. What they did was that it wasn't a case of if you think you're vulnerable, you should stay home. If you were over sort of 65, you stayed home whether you liked it or not. Mm -hmm. And you didn't go out and the shops were organized to deliver food, which is which is a, a nice thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't like setting a precedent that the government can keep you locked yeah, up in your house. Yeah. yeah. Based well, on coverage by CNN or what there's Andy no Cuomo way said. there's no I don't think there's any way this country can go back to that. Two people no. are angry. They're angry that it happened the first time and it just killed the economy. And uh, no, we have loads of friends. They can they can hang out. They can make it for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, right. they're going to have serious problems looking right. after their family. And there's a cost yep. benefit analysis mm -hmm. to be had here. I mean, we're seeing the repercussions of people being locked down, the stress on families. And if we're going to look after families, we have to take them into account of saying, when you just destroyed both jobs of uh, parents yeah. and the kids are trapped right. at home and the mom and dad are worried about how they're going to pay for things. That's a it's tough one to play. Yep. It, what is your opinion? Do the masks work or not? Were well, we all told the to start that we were fools for wearing the surgical masks? They did exactly nothing. And then all of a they turned around when that wasn't uh, playing well to say, well, if you don't wear a mask, now you've got to. So I think there's a lot of political issues in it. Um, you know, you can touch something for two seconds and then all of a sudden you've got it. I'm a great believer in is, is there's a responsibility of citizens. You know what? If you're around an older person, give them the courtesy of six feet. Follow the basic rules. It's up to you because you'll get us back into this. Um, but if you think I'm going to tie people down and put masks on them or worse yet, 
make our poor police officers have to chase people right. around the place or this is not a time for oppressing them. They're under enough right. stress already. Right, right. So, well, I think it's about giving people the choice, you know, and they, they can choose what they want to do. So do you think it'll come up for a vote at, at the Santa Bell Council? It'll come up on Tuesday. There's an emergency meeting being called to discuss it. Just the masks. How do you think it'll go? Um, well, I'll tell you what. I don't obviously for sunshine reasons. I can't say with any of the others. I think they're doing. Um, I've looked at this matter closely. We brought it up three times. Um, businesses are private property. If you want people to wear masks sure. coming in, you sure. do, you know it's the old no shirt, no shoot, right. no dice. Right. It, you do that, and, right. and that's the correct thing if that's the right thing. But if people don't want to do that, then people who don't want to be around people not in masks. Right. Don't go into that business. Right. That's we, your we were, call. This is where this is where citizens do the job. It's not governments to treat us like little children and tell us what to do. So I'm a vote no on compelling mask, but a very hard vote yes for telling people, look, this is where we're all supposed to step up and do something ourselves. Not right. try, baby, to the government to do it for us. <laughs> <laughs> where can people find your information, give you money, donate to your campaign? Any yeah, of that's that? That's very nice of you. Oh, sure. I'll, right after this, I'll get a check and then we'll talk. We'll just pass around the uh, the bucket. Uh, they can go to vote Jason Mon M A U G H A N dot com. That's vote Jason Mon dot com. Or they can always call me at my office, 472 2424, and uh, we'll be happy to look after them. Nobody has sweat more than you on our show. It's incredible. It's hot. Yeah, no, I'm we have had plenty of tears. I do yeah. have, in fairness, I do have Irish treacle blood. <laughs> so it's like gravy. I in have me no now. idea what that means, but. Thank you so much for coming on. Will you come back after you win the primary? I would love that. And that's one of those things that, you know, I, I'm still being involved between elections. I'm always at things. I'm doing what I can because that's the time it counts, not when the election is at. It's what were you doing right. between this? Right. Well, we appreciate you coming all the way and down to Fort Myers. So Thank you really so much. Good luck in the campaign. And hopefully you guys can send us some of those pictures that they were taking. And anything you need, just I'll let us know. I'll be very happy to. We look forward to having you back. Jason Cheers, Mon, everybody. You. You. We appreciate Yay. him coming on and bringing his whole family down. And, Did you play uh, the... I didn't. I didn't play it, dear. But before we get to our next guest, I know our next guest is uh, Thanks, laying around. Thank you, Jason, so much. And good luck in the race. I want to make sure that... Uh, you see, I try to give her the cue that every time we... Uh, we do the uh, the bye bye. She's supposed to, you know, uh, shepherd the guest out, shepherd the guest in, but uh, she doesn't do that. So I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Shuckers at the Gulf Shore and the Cottage.